It's almost time to start jingling the bells and chesting the nuts, plus Black Friday is right around the corner, so there is no better time than now to discuss 10 gifts for the board gamer in your life. Clouds. What are they? And do you want them on your table? Well, no one really knows the answer to that first question, but everyone knows the answer to the second. And if you wouldn't let a cloud play a board game with you, then why the hell are you letting that glass onto the table without its shoes? What? Condensation's bad for wood, okay? Get your gamer coasters so everyone can sip, swig, and slurp to their heart's content. You can get just about anything on the coasters, and there are a ton of different materials, but I do warn you, some materials are better than others. I have quite a few of these, like acrylic maybe on one side and then cork on the other coasters, and these have great personalization potential, but there is also, uh-oh, a serious problem. And that is that because of this material, when you've got the condensation on and it's enough condensation that there's like water that's actually like dripping down and then this bottom ring is like surrounded by water. That that surrounding of water on the coaster makes the glass kind of stick to the coaster. So that when you lift it up, the coaster comes with it. And then if you like tilt the glass, the coaster like falls and it's got water on it. And then splish splash, your board game's taking a bath. Yeah, some coasters can make the problem worse, so I think your best bet is corking it. Just go all cork all the time. Like, check this out. Whoa! I can't tell you how easy this is. It's, it's remarkable. And I think it would be easy for anyone, not just an absurdly talented guy like me. If there are any children watching, please take this moment to cover your ears. Dice towers can straight up scrungle my bungles, all right? Are there cool dice towers? Sure, no question, but they're kind of like a lot. And they take up much needed shelf space and the best ones aren't generic, which means that they don't go with every game. But you know what does? A nice dice tray. They are classy, they're inexpensive, and they slide ooh, oh so nicely onto just about any shelf. And this benefits you too. After all, if you live with a gamer, you know the terror that comes from watching your loved one dive to the floor. You look left, you look right. Is it gunshots? No, worse. Oh, and the most horrifying part of all, that was the perfect roll, but floor dice don't count. Now on to- He said if the channel hits 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year, he'll let me eat a whole meal. Please subscribe. <laughs> He's just kidding. I let him eat. Sawdust is in food. If it's not food, then why do you eat it? Number eight. I feel like I'm on board game Shark Tank presenting problems and then saying there's got to be a better way. Well, guess what, Gumbo? There is. There's this annoying trend that I've seen growing over the last few years, which is every single kickstarted game seemingly has a playmat as an add-on. Here is the thing. Not every game needs a playmat. Playmats are at their most helpful when you would otherwise need to pick up a card off of a table. If you can't pick up a cardboard token off of a table, then I think we've gotta have another talk. Cards on wood. That's the problem that we're trying to solve here. And what do you know, it's always the giant miniatures games that are offering those playmats. Those games where the miniatures are pretty dang easy to pick up regardless of what material is underneath them. Sure, there are some card games that offer playmat options, but you can't go around buying playmats for every game. You're gonna run out of money soon. I propose the all-purpose playmat. I've been suckered into enough Kickstarter ones or game-specific ones that I don't have just a plain playmat, but any board gamer who doesn't would be thrilled to have one, I assure you. Any game with cards, slap this down on the table and frustration be gone. Now you will need to do a little legwork for this one. You need to know what size table your board gamer is working with so you don't overshoot playmat size. But I always bring a tape measure to my friends' houses and that always goes well for me.
This here is the only suggestion that doesn't apply to all board gamers. Your gamer does need to be a miniature painter as well to get any value out of this. I'm sorry, I wanted a nice round list of 10 and I couldn't think of any other general things. I painted for years without this and I was a fool. Don't let your gamer be a fool. However, do let them know that they should periodically look at their mini under regular lighting too. My first few paint jobs after I got this light ended up being a little dark because I painted for those perfectly lit, bright conditions. Okay, I can feel your raised eyebrow and your accusatory stare. Is this guy gonna suggest that I should buy a whole table for Jeff, the board gamer in my life? Yes, but I am well aware of how much a nice new table can cost, so I have some ideas. First, not everyone needs a new table. If this Jeff is playing on a nice but not as large as it could be wooden table, maybe let's let Jeff handle the new table acquisitions. However, if Jeff is struggling with a small foldable plastic card table, an upgrade might be due. True board game tables cost upwards of $1,000. I don't know how much you've got in your coffers, but I personally am not willing to drop that kind of cash on f***ing Jeff. Instead, I would recommend checking out Facebook Marketplace. I got this massive, gorgeous table for 200 bucks, and yeah, it's like the best purchase that I've ever made. Two copies of Star Wars Rebellion or one table to play all of my games on. You know, I've already got a copy of Star Wars Rebellion, so it was a pretty simple decision for me, but if Jeff doesn't, he only needs one copy, right? Get him the table. My Facebook Marketplace breakthrough came when I started searching for conference tables. I believe that kitchen and dining room tables usually sell for like normal amounts, kind of what you would expect, but conference tables, my theory is because they're so big, they're so cumbersome, people want to get rid of them. They usually offer some steep discounts. I even saw a few for free. The clinking of metal coins. For many gamers, this may be the greatest gift that you could possibly give. Honestly, this is a well-documented love for board gamers, so I'm gonna make a little addendum here in case you want to go the extra mile. Get multiple sets of metal coins for a few different game genres. This is the kind of overkill I'm always dreaming of, but never have the guts to actually go ahead and click purchase. But if your gamer plays sci-fi games and fantasy games and games with Japanese themes and games with blah 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 blah, then one set of coins just isn't gonna provide them with the proper immersion, eh? I'm walking here. Take a look at their collections, see what they have a bunch of, and then consider getting a few different sets of coins for a few different genres. If you're in a position to pick out the number of coins that you get, I would say because most board games play up to four players, maybe like 20 ones, 10 fives, five tens would work a lot of the time. And if you just have no idea what to do, I would say too many coins is a better problem to have than too few. Nothing classes up a joint like some framed artwork, even if the framed artwork is of some nerdy bull Look at this room. A sad YouTuber lives here, clearly. <gasps> What's this? A sexy connoisseur just moved in? And he's rich? And he's seven feet tall? And he's never lost a board game? That artwork is from Board Game Geek's Artist series, which are prints of some of the most popular board games done by artists who didn't initially do those board games. They all kind of like collaborate on each other. It's really cool. With this pick, I'm transitioning away from the general gifts toward ones where you should probably know a thing or two about your gamer's favorites. I think it's more fun to get them art based on games that they love, so, and I know how hard this is gonna be, maybe ask them some questions about board games, assuming you have a few spare hours. Playing with plain cardboard tokens is a fate much worse than death, and everyone knows it. But paying to play with a game's upgraded components is often a little more than I can stomach. So that is where you come in. If I had to pick one thing on this list as the overall kindest thing to get a board gamer, it's upgraded components, because I always, always want to buy them, but I almost never feel like it's justified, which makes it the perfect gift. 
Again, you are gonna need to know which games your gamer wants upgraded. I think this one might be the moment to say to hell with surprises and just ask them straight up which games they most want the deluxe stuff for. Let me be the first to say most board games don't need a third party organizer. They made a King of Tokyo one. What? But when a game does need an organizer, whoa, it really needs it. Once more, we find ourselves in you gotta talk to your gamer territory, only they're gonna know which games of theirs are desperately crying out to be organized. Also, you might think that it's an extra part of the gift to put together the organizer for your gamer, but make sure that that's what they want. I'm the kind of nerd that loves a project, so your nerd might feel the same. And finally, what else could be number one other than something that says you're number one? This is kind of the board game equivalent to a world's best grandma mug, but come on, you know that's always a home run gift. There is nothing that I prize more than this Twilight Imperium trophy because it is not just a trinket. This is a statement. It tells the entire world that the last game of Twilight Imperium I played, I won. Now, this can have an interesting effect that you may be able to use to your advantage. If you get your gamer a trophy for a specific game, which I do recommend, maybe it's for a game that you don't love playing. I can only speak for myself, but the thought of having to give this trophy up to another Twilight Imperium winner, it does make me a little less likely to break that game out. That said, this can have the opposite effect. If your board gamer is, let's say, bad at the game that you got them a trophy for, they're gonna wanna play that game over and over again until they win the trophy, so it's potentially a double-edged sword. That is all for this one. Leave a comment down below, what is the best gaming gift you have gotten or given? And please, please, please subscribe. I can't keep doing this. No. No.